Now pie charts and bar graphs can be used uh, to represent categorical variables. So these are the two examples we are going to see in this part, pie charts and bar graphs. But before we get into pie charts and bar graph, we need to understand what the uh, distribution of a variable is. Now here is an example of a distribution. The variable here is grades. It's a categorical variable because it is not a numerical measurement. So grades is the variable and the various values that the grades can take is A, B, C, and D. Now in the second column corresponding to A you see the number 5. What that means is there are 5 students who received an A. Corresponding to B you see a 10. So it's uh, the number of students that received a B is 10. Corresponding to C you see the number 4. What that means is 4 students received a C and similarly one student received a D. Now the third column is for our convenience. Uh, that is, we write down the percentages, uh, the percent, the percent of students who got an A, the percent of students who received a B, a percent of students who received a C, and so on. Now, what exactly is a distribution? It is the variable along with the counts. The first two columns in this table form the distribution. Here it is the distribution of the variable which is categorical. The variable is grades. We are looking at this table and probably wondering if uh, there were any students who received an F. Well the answer is no because this table represents all students and it looks like uh, none of the students got an F on the test. Now how do we a construct a pie chart. We have an easy example here and it's um, easy to construct the pie chart. So we're going to look at the whole which is the circle. That's the whole class. Now let's just find a center and divide the circle into sections. So what we have here is a circle. Um, let's look at the percent of students that received a B is 50%. So let's just take the uh, top half of the circle and um, that would represent the percent of students who received a B. The percent of students that received an A is 25%, which is a quarter of the whole. So that would be 25%, which is a quarter. So that would be the percent of students that received an A. Now, the percent of students that received a C and D together is 25. So the rest of this uh, section is students who received a C and a D. Let's just roughly divide that into 20% which is um, students who received a C and 5% that is percent of students that received a D. Now here is a better graph. It's much better because we used um, Crunchit, which is a statistical software that can be used for a lot of statistical calculations and uh, graphs. So you'll find this on Launchpad. Just follow the instructions. Go to Launchpad, Resources, then select Resources by Type. Then you get Crunchit. Double click on Crunchit. Double click on the cent uh, cells and you can enter the numbers. Uh, you can select graphics because this is a graph and under graphics what you would select is a pie chart with summarized data. Now let's just quickly discuss the difference between raw data and summarized data. So what does raw data look like? So since here we are talking about grades of students um, 
let's just say I look at each student in my roster and um, put the grade next to their names. So let's say the first student got an A. We have an A and the second student got a B. Then the third student got an A. Then a C. Then the next student got, let's say, a D. The next student again gets an A and I keep going until I uh, grade each student. So that what we have here are raw data. It's just a list of grades. Now, summarized data is in the form of a distribution. So you have the grades A, B, C, and D, and the number of students, which is the counts, in the second column. So let's say um, five students got an A, um, 10 students got a B, and so on. So this would be summarized data. Raw data is um, confusing so that's the reason why we summarize it and that's called summarized data so if you have summarized data entered or if you have summarized data to work with then you have to select pie chart with summarized data uh, if not you'd have to go with pie chart with raw data now in order to use this graph in a document uh, you can follow the instructions for copying this graph uh, from Crunchit. So the image cannot be copied directly from Crunchit and uh, then pasted onto another document. So what you need to do first is right click on the image, uh, save the image in one of your folders and once it is saved then it is, you're able to copy the image and paste it into the document that you need to work with. So when you hand in homework, that's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to produce your graphs on Crunchit and then um, save the image and copy and paste it onto your document. So that way you don't have to draw these graphs by hand. Now in the previous example, we had grades of all students and we were able to make a pie chart uh, of the distribution of the variable that is grades. In this example, we are looking at a freshman mathematics class uh, and the raw data we collected is uh, we looked at each student and um, asked them what they were majoring in. So these are the various academic fields. The variable here is categorical and that is academic fields and you can see the list of uh, uh, academic fields in the first column. Now from the question it is not very clear if all students have been represented in this uh, table. We know that the total of uh, number of students that have been represented here are about 500 but we still don't know if that's the entire mathematics class. So what, when, what we can do here is construct a bar graph. So this is what a bar graph looks like. The variable which is the uh, categorical variable that is academic fields or academic majors goes on to the uh, horizontal axis and the counts or the number of students that fall into each uh, category of major uh, goes into the y-axis. For example, if we look at the first bar, we're looking at the first one, the major is business administration and the number of students is 110. So each rectangle has the same width, it's separated by spaces because what we have here is a categorical variable and not a quantitative variable. Just make sure you leave gaps and that's what you need to do in a bar graph. The widths of the bars or rectangles are constant, uh, but the height of the uh, rectangle is determined by the number of students that fall into the bin. So the height of this rectangle, which is um, elementary education, is about 140. So the height of the bar is equal to the number of students uh, majoring in elementary education. 
So this is how the um, bar graph is constructed. What I used to construct the bar graph in the on the previous slide uh, is Crunchit. So Crunchit is available on Launchpad. Just follow the instructions. You need to go to resources, then go to resources by type, double click on Crunchit, double click on the cells in order to enter the labels and numbers, uh, go to graphics and then go with uh, summarize data. Now again these are the instructions on how to copy and uh, save the image so that way um, you can copy and paste the image into any document that you want.